I'm Pat Wood and I'm the greeter here at the third annual Farm Workers Dinner. So about three years ago, um, Christy and myself started interviewing some of the farmers in the area and we went and talked to some of the workers just to see and get different points of view. And it ended up that we thought, wouldn't it be great if we did a dinner um, just as a way of welcoming and hopefully to open the doors of conversation and understanding between both sides of the community. And here we are at the third annual and it's been absolutely wonderful. Tonight we have got about 25 volunteers and it's wonderful because again it's spreading into the community. I've had about half a dozen or people who have not been here in the last couple of years and they called and heard it was a great event and wanted to be part of it and so we're just thrilled that, that this message is getting through and there seems to be a real sense of cooperation between the workers and the community. I could also add to that that Tom Chapman, our, our representative with the RDOS, gave us a grant this year, or the RDOS gave us a grant of $1,000, and we have a liaison person who works with the farm workers and in between the community if there's any issues that they can be worked out in advance, and that person is Nicole Verplatz and she's sort of been doing that on her own for a number of years anyway because she was a worker here 30 some odd years ago so she's wonderful in the position and I've also had an ongoing conversation with Tom Ria Space um, that we could have for the internet uh, we, in, there is a space in the library and last year we introduced it and we have it now in the museum so Tom has said that next year we are going to have our own space we're not sure where yet, but the RDOS is going to put up a trailer or something somewhere, and we're hoping that that will eventually lead to maybe like a friendship center. You know, who knows? There could be all sorts of things going on in it. So we're thrilled with that progress, and we're looking now towards showers and all sorts of things. So, But just really, really hopeful and really thrilled at the response that we're receiving from, from everybody. <laughs> How did you like the supper? Yeah, it's very good, yeah, big. What's your name and where do you come from? I'm from France and my name is Béranger. Welcome. Yeah, and I work with a lot of friends, Québécois, it's a fun, I love Naramata. Thank you for the dinner. My name is Nicole and I'm now the new liaison uh, between the farm worker and the uh, Naramata citizen. Uh, this is a project that is was founded by the RDOS to help better communication between the Naramata citizen and the farm worker. And tonight it is part of what we're trying to do is to reach out between uh, two groups to make the community of Naramata a better place to be and to live. Um, well, there's two things. Uh, we all live in an area where we have vineyard and we have orchard. And this is a nice place to live. It's peaceful. Everybody likes the surrounding and the farming and the vineyard. But we also need temporary worker. And the best way to have those temporary workers is having our young, whether they're from Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, or wherever. They come here in the summer. They're here for a few weeks because they all go back to school in the fall. Most of them are between 16 and 17. Uh, they need to work, uh, but at the same time, they need to understand the community, and the community needs to understand their needs. For the workers in Naramata is to know that, okay, there's a park, but there's also rule and regulation, there is ethic, um, and it's my job is to basically relate it to them, to, to help them better understanding life in the, in the farming area, but also what's right and what's not, and what's appropriate and what's not. And often it's just a question of communication. Most of them, you know, they're like our kids, 16, 17, 18, 19, they still haven't really learned to live yet. They hear without their parents' supervision, so sometimes they get out of hand. But if we have better communication, can talk with them, it, it, we're living in a better um, area. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm from Australia. And I'm Andreas, so I'm also from Australia. And we're here for uh, the cherry picking season here in Naramata. And um, tonight we're here because uh, the local communities put on a, a wonderful meal for us, all of the cherry pickers. Yeah, all these lovely ladies, and I'm sure there were a few gentlemen in there too, but it was really nice and everyone was really friendly during the week. We, we were in town and people were all saying, oh, are you coming to the dinner? And uh, yeah, it's a lovely community.
I think I think it's great that the community has come together and is putting this on for to welcome the local the, the pickers that come from other parts of Canada and other parts of the world to to come and pick cherries and pick whatever fruits are here. I think it's great to give them a, a warm welcome and in turn I, I feel that they will they will have that mutual respect amongst the community and the, the pickers. Mm -hmm. What are some of the needs in this community to uh, to serve uh, the, the visiting farm workers? I think one of the things would be to do something like Oliver and Karameas where they have a camping, a campground where they can go back to at night, especially before the season starts when the, when the farmers, the orchardists, are not taking them in instead of camping here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, it saves, you know, it, it would it would help on forest fires. It would help on a lot of things and a lot, a lot more it'd be communication between the resident of the town and and the people coming into pick. It mm -hmm. would be very useful.